Okay, back in the shop and this is the carbon kit and it, this is going to be an instructional video on how you build it and put the whole thing together. Now depending on what you select when you order it, you can order it without any of the building materials or you can order it with all the building materials. This right now is all the building materials minus the carbon fiber. You don't need to be using the carbon fiber. Um, if you want to use carbon, you can use carbon. Um, we can. That's an additional thing that can be added on as well, but you don't need it. So in this version of the build, we're going to build it and use some paint in, instead of the carbon. So just briefly walking through everything that we have here, uh, we have the carbon fuselage, which is ready to go, and the carbon base, which is ready to go, and then our mast. So the whole frame just goes together with the hardware, which is included right here. So those big four M8 bolts puts your frame together, and so that's really the basis of what you have there. And then we have obviously the wing. Now this is the 2300 size wing. And again, the option, uh, this is a swoosh stabilizer, or you could just go with the normal one. But in this, in this build video, we're going to be using that. And then we have our epoxy as usual. And then we have microfibers and then our mold release wax. So we're gonna get to everything here at some point during the video. But basically what we're doing is we're just building this wing, our stabilizer, and then we're just going to be fitting the front end of our carbon mass into the wing, and that's pretty much it. Okay, so to get started, the first thing we're going to do is fill these holes with epoxy, and to, to do that on the flat side, so this is the bottom side of the wing, I just take a piece of masking tape, and make sure to press around the edges so that we get a good seal. And I'm going to do the same with this wing. This is obviously the side that mounts up against the fuselage. You can see that flat spot. I'm going to tape the other side of that. So one other thing is when we fill up these holes, we don't want the, we want the wing to be sitting level. So in order to do that, I'm just going to prop it up on two things of equal height. And now the wing is sitting level. Our stabilizer, it'll pretty much just sit right where you want it, just on its own, so nothing special needed for that. All right, so I now have a little bit of epoxy mixed up, and this is a very important thing that I'm just going to, we're going to get started with right now, and it's gonna kind of continue throughout the build, so we need to pay attention. Um, so epoxy, it gets hot when it starts to cure up, especially if you were just to leave a large mass of it, say in a cup like this, and even more so if you pour it into styrofoam which is a natural insulator. So we don't want to pour these all at once because that epoxy, it's going to get too hot and it's going to melt into the foam. Um, you can fill all those voids with more epoxy, but it just creates a mess that you don't want to deal with. So to start off, I'm just going to half fill these and then that won't allow the heat to build up as much. And what I'm also going to do is take this piece and I'm actually going to put a fan blowing on this just to kind of take away that excess heat. Now with the stabilizer, it's nowhere near as deep and it's not foam. So we don't need to worry about things melting there. So this I'm actually gonna pour all in one shot. And again, I'm just gonna add just a touch more here and have these halfway full. All right, so now that that first pour has now cured, I'm gonna go ahead and top off. All right, so I just went ahead and now completely filled these holes up. So I'm just gonna let that cure now, just as before, and then we're gonna be ready to start glassing things up. Okay, so now that those holes are filled, it's just a matter of peeling the tape, and we're going to get started on glassing up the wings. So this is the fiberglass here, and I'm gonna go lay this out on a clean table and cut it to size. And in terms of what size and how many of that size you need, it's going to be in the instructions that come with um, the whole kit. So follow that, we'll cut out all our pieces and get those ready to glass onto the wing. All right, so before I start glassing up this wing, I always like to glass up the bottom first and then do the top. So if we're glassing up the bottom, what I like to do is I like to just place some masking tape 
going, going along this front edge here. And you can see that we're going to have this glass overlap quite a bit. So we pretty much have double the thickness on the front. So I'm just going to do this for the leading edge going all the way down to the tips. Okay, so just taking a look here, I have this tape going just pretty even, just like that, all on this leading edge. And that's just going to help us cut that glass nice and clean once we get this all laid up. Okay, so looking at the top here, um, I just like to use a piece of cardboard with rounded edges to, as a squeegee, works pretty well. And so I have all my layers cut out, and so you'll know from cutting that we start with these two pieces right here that just go in the center. And so if you've never done uh, this type of epoxy work before, you just kind of lay some out and gently spread it out and just make sure that the glass gets nice and soaked through. It basically it turns clear when it's when it's about right and then we get some epoxy down into that foam. And so I like to just go one layer at a time and then I'll add my next layer just like that. And you don't have to be perfect because you can always you know, if you have too much, the next layer will soak up some of the extra. If you have too little, you can always add a little bit more and work it down into the weave with the squeegee. So as you can see there, we had our two sections already glassed up and now we're going to put on the first of the next whole bunch of layers following the same process. So lay it out and have everything lined up and then we're just going to start soaking it through and I'm just going to keep doing this until I work through all the layers and the next the only other thing that you need to worry about is you do this until you work through all of them and then we're going to wrap the front edge around Okay guys, so we have all these layers down, nice and saturated, all nice and even. Um, so you can see we have our overhang right here. And so I'm going to be using the squeegee, I, I do it all the time, so I'm pretty good with it like this. Um, but if you want, you can just use a paintbrush and that'll be a little bit cleaner and easier if uh, you don't really, if you're not very confident in doing this step. So basically what I like to do is we just want to wet out this overhang and so I'll just put a little bit down like that usually I like to just work in like half a wing section and then I'll with one hand kind of prop this up and then with the squeegee I'll work out the epoxy and you can see we're starting to get this edge nice and saturated so that's what we're looking for um, and we're just going to do that along the whole leading edge here. It doesn't have to be completely perfect because once we like actually tuck it underneath, it'll pretty much even everything out. But um, so what we, what we have right here is what we're looking for. So now I'm just gonna do the other half. All right, so our other half is now wetted out and everything's looking good. And so what I'm going to do now is just kinda tuck that up and underneath that leading edge and so we're going up onto that masking tape that we laid earlier and so that's going to give us a nice clean break and we're just wrapping it around all the way down to the tips the tips will take a little bit of extra care as this starts to cure so don't stress immediately on the tips um, just get the whole front sections laid down here and again if the if you're having difficulties using this uh, a paint using a brush is always a great idea just a little bit easier and it might give you a little bit more control okay guys so now this is done for the most part and so what we're looking for here is all the cloth is nice and evenly saturated there's no air bubbles everything's nice and clean so our trailing edge here, you can see it's saturated. 
nicely. It's not like um, you can see how the glass is saturated, extending beyond that trailing edge just a bit. That's all we're looking for. We are gonna trim this exactly flush along that line of foam. So as long as all that glass is nice and wetted out, just a little bit extra is what you want. So taking a look underneath here, uh, we can see we have our glass that is nicely wrapped right onto our tape. And that goes all the way to the wingtips. And so that's what we want it to be. I'm just doing a last visual inspection, making sure there's no uh, dry spots on this leading edge or air bubbles. And everything looks to be just how it should be. So this is what we're looking for. And so as mentioned before, uh, taking a look at the wingtips here, really our main focus is to make sure that this glass on the actual bottom surface stays onto the foam and doesn't actually like lift up like that. So we wanna first make sure it's nice and laying flat. And so it's pretty hard to get all this glass to conform on that really sharp wingtip here. And so once this epoxy starts to thicken up and gets like kind of half cured, when this is really sticky, um, but not yet solid, I'm going to come in here and just obviously with a gloved hand and just kind of pinch that glass to hug that wingtip as much as possible while make sure and while uh, being assured that the glass is still flush on this side of the wing. So that's kind of just a timing thing. Um, it's like 80 degrees in this room right now. And so in probably an hour is when I'll come in and just double check that. And it's always a great idea to come in every like, you know, if you're just hanging out in the garage or wherever you might be, if you're there, I mean, you might as well every 30 minutes or so come in and check in on it just to make sure that no air bubbles kind of come up and then you can like continue to flatten out these wing tips if you want them absolutely perfect. And so the last thing that you're gonna wanna make sure as you tuck those wing tips in as it starts to cure up, at the point where it's no longer really, really tacky, so we could kinda with a gloved finger stick it on any surface and it's not like we're not getting epoxy transferring onto the glove. So it's like maybe 80% cured. I'm going to come in with a razor blade or if you have a really sharp uh, utility knife, anything like that, I'm going to cut right along that tape line and that's gonna make things very, very easy and clean in terms of you know, trimming that edge and then being able to flip it over and glass the other side. So that's a timing thing. Again, it's about 80 degrees in here and so that might be two hours from now. Uh, it could be three, that's temperature dependent, so as always, if you really want to get it, I mean, you can come in and check every like 30 minutes, every 20 minutes and get it at that perfect state. So I'm going to wait for that to happen. And then we're going to trim that edge, as I just mentioned with the razor blade. Okay, so this epoxy is starting to cure up and it's now uh, very sticky. So I'm able to kind of work it around this tip and have it hug the foam really nicely. So I'm just kind of gently moving it and getting it where it should be. Uh, you don't have to worry about it being perfect because, you know, if you really uh, don't get it um, perfect, you can always come in after and add some little tiny scraps of fiberglass to really uh, get those tips going. And again, you got to remember, we're going to do the other side too. So I, this tip is now looking great. All right, so the tips are now nice. And if you listen to my finger on the fiberglass, you can kind of hear that it's still pretty sticky. So I'm gonna let it sit for maybe another half hour. And then I'm going to flip it and then trim that tape line. So just trying to give you guys a sense of where you want this to be. Uh, there's no exact point, but you know, it's kind of a ballpark situation. All right, so we're back about a half hour later. And this is now, see you don't hear that noise anymore. It's not, all that sticky so I am comfortable with flipping it over onto this side. I'm not going to really push really hard on it but it's fine just to place it on its own weight. And so now I'm just going to take a, a blade, I use this, I've obviously used this one many times before. I'm just going to poke it through down 
into the foam just a little bit and go right along this tape line. So on maybe the corner of this blade is maybe going in about an eighth of an inch or maybe five or so millimeters. So that's about, that's okay. I, you don't really want to get the whole blade plunging in there all that deep. But you can see what this allows us to do. Is pick a spot. And we get a very nice clean line right where we made that cut. And frankly, really, I mean, you just barely, once this fully cures, you just barely have to hit it with sandpaper and then you're able to glass the other side. So with that front side trimmed really nicely, and I'm still able to kind of wrap these tips a little bit more if I have to. But we're going to address these later before we glass the other side. It's not as essential to get the timing right on the back, but um, sometimes this cures up a little bit faster because there's just more layers. Um, but you can easily do this once it's fully cured. I'm also just going to save myself just a little bit more time and just trim the back pretty close while I'm here. And again, once it's fully cured, I'm going to come in with some sandpaper and get this really right up against the foam. Okay, so that's it for the bottom. I'm just gonna let this sit and cure up. Uh, you can see it came out very well. No air bubbles, I have it trimmed up. Pretty close to where I want it to be. Getting that timing right on that front, on this front leading edge with that tape, I mean, I would almost say it's essential. So definitely don't forget about it. Set an alarm, make sure you're there and you catch it at a decent, it's a large window. I mean, it's probably a two hour window. Just once you glass it up, just make sure you're around for the next couple hours so you can trim it. Otherwise it's kind of a pain in the neck because now it's fully cured. You have to peel back the tape. It's really stiff. It's harder to get a nice clean cut. You can easily do it. I've forgotten and, and trimmed it up after it's fully cured, but getting it at that correct time where you can easily cut it with a blade is, is definitely the optimal time to do that. Okay, so now that this stuff is fully cured, I'm going to now do that kind of final sand and trim it back. Um, so this is just 120. Um, that's probably the highest you're gonna want any higher and you're not really gonna sand much. This is 120. Um, so if you're, if you're sanding by hand, that's, that's fine. It's just gonna take a little bit longer. It, it's also a great help to have some sandpaper on some sort of flat board. So as you sand up the trailing edge, you can get that nice and flush and it's just a bit easier uh, to do the sides as well. If you have a palm sander, that also is gonna make it a lot faster or any sort of like sanding tools, belt sanders, etc. Um, either way, it's just sandpaper. You can definitely do it by hand. Won't, won't be too difficult by hand to sand this down and trim it up. All right, so just taking a look here out of the glassing room where, you know, doing all the sanding work to keep it clean. Uh, this is just with that sandpaper and by hand here, you can kind of see it's, it's very quick and easy to start making progress. So we're just sanding that down right up and along to that foam line. So just a little bit more to go. And then I'll kind of come and work along this whole trailing edge just to really get it right down, right up into the foam. So just like that, uh, it's pretty quick. I mean, I'll probably just finish this one just by hand. It'll honestly take another two minutes, maybe. Okay, so this is now nice and trimmed up along the edge and the trailing edge here, nice and flush to the foam. So the last thing I'm going to do is just, again with hand sandpaper, just lightly hit down this um, edge that we cut. Just knock it down so it's not as uh, 
as sharp as it is. So pretty much just like that is what I want to do going along this whole line. And lastly, so we're going to be doing the top side now. And so we're going to be wrapping some glass over this leading edge onto the other side. So we want to scuff up this leading edge so that we can get a nice bond with that next layer. And so something like that is really all you need. Just a couple passes by hand, nothing too much. All right, so we're back. Everything's sanded up nice and smooth. And so just as we did before, I'm going to lay a tape line in pretty much the same spot, but on the other side this time. All right, so our tape line is now set just like that, kind of leaving the tips open because we're gonna try and wrap them as much as we can. And so flipping over, we're now ready to glass the top side. It's pretty much identical to the bottom. Uh, the Again, the sheet will have the exact cutouts and, and layer amounts. I believe there's one or two less layers on the top. Uh, so follow that in terms of guiding you through how many. All right, so I'm gonna start laying this up and we're gonna start with those midsection pieces again. Now we do have the fuselage insert here and so I'm just gonna work around that and try not to have a whole ton of epoxy go into this area and seep down in there. I, I kind of want to keep it dry, or not dry, but I just don't want to flood it. That's what I'm going to be looking out for here. Just kind of work along the sides of it. And really, once you get that first layer down, it, it becomes less and less of a concern. So just as before, the midsections are all set, and now I'm just going to be working out the rest of the layers. And I pretty much just divide the wing in half around that insert and just wet them out. All right, so we have all our layers on there. Again, it's, it's just like the bottom side, except we're doing the top now. Uh, I've wrapped that leading edge around and the trailing edge is nice and neat and kind of just soaked out right where it should be. And so just as before, I'm gonna wait until this epoxy starts to get pretty tacky. And then I'm gonna come in with that razor blade and trim along that tape line. And then also after doing that, I'm probably going to fill in the leading edge. So I'll show you guys that next step. All right, so I'm again at the point where I'm going to wanna to trim the tape line here. And so just as before, I'm just gonna get a razor blade and start trimming. But this time what I'm doing is, obviously we're not cutting into the foam because this side has already been fiberglassed. So we're just cutting through this glass and letting the blade slide along the already cured bottom side. So we're just cutting this, this top overlap here. And so if everything goes to plan, get a nice clean cut line all the way around the wing. All right, so that's cut pretty nice. We got a little bit of tape residue, but that's no problem. We can kind of wait for that to, once it's fully cure, get rid of that. And so also this is a great time to cut out our mounting area right here. And so again, just with the blade, just, just kind of follow that foam. So we don't, we're looking for a pretty close trim on this. We don't need this to be exactly uh, perfect, but it does help to get it relatively close to where, you're, where you want it to be. Because once this cure is up, you can also come in here and pretty easily cut it with a relatively sh sharp blade. So taking a close look here at the um, wingtip. So I made that trim line going all the way to about there. And that's where this fold is nice and wraps around the tip. And so right here, it doesn't, and that's fine. And so what I'm gonna do is kinda just lay it flat like that, because when we come in to do the trailing edge, we're gonna get all sorts of epoxy up in there. 
and that's going to form our really um, hard and durable wingtip. So both wingtips look just like this, and so that's just about where you want it to be. Now this isn't quite ready yet to do the um, trailing edge, and you can do the trailing edge when it's fully cured, but if you're just trying to save time, you can wait until it gets a little bit stiffer than this to do that. Okay, so one of the first things we want to do when it comes to pouring this trailing edge is just make sure our wing is sitting level so we don't want it naturally it'll just kind of slope down like that and we don't want it sloping like that we want it as level as we can so I just have a little wedge here which I'm placing just to get this relatively close to, to level. So when it comes to getting that, this rail, this edge poured there's really two methods you can use the first would be to use a little portion of these microfibers, mix them in with some epoxy to thicken it up, and then pour that rail. And so really the, the issue you run into is the curved tips. So if you just pour normal epoxy into that curve, it's gonna all run down, and it's gonna be hard to get it to fill the trailing edge going out to the wingtip. So if you thicken it enough so that it doesn't flow down that's one way to do it the other way and this is the way I usually do it more so probably for speed I find this way is a lot faster and this is just fiberglass that was in a weave that I pulled so I pulled the strands out from the weave and so this is a lot thicker than the four ounce which I recommend glassing the wings with but you can use the four ounce. That just means you need to pull many more uh, strands as opposed to this, which is the individual strands are much thicker. And so if you get a whole bunch of strands going, um, basically you, you get a little epoxy in and then you lay the strands down in there and that will hold the epoxy as well and allow you to get that epoxy going up to that wingtip. So for this demonstration, I'm going to be using the strand method. And so to start that off, I'm just going to pour a bit of epoxy going along. This whole rail, it will flow down from those tips, but a little bit will remain and we'll be able to get more up there as we go. So now that I already have some epoxy in there, I come in with some strands and just work from the center out and just pretty much get them down into that area. Tuck them in the best we can and work our way out all the way and around the wingtips. So here I am at this wingtip, just kind of continuing and laying it down. And then so here is where we had previously folded that little bit of glass out where that wrap is no longer continuing. And so I'm just going to get this in there as tight as we can and just leave it hanging forward like that because that will be trimmed and sanded off later. And so if you're using the thickened epoxy method, um, you pour a little bit in, you might even need to use maybe a stirring stick or like a popsicle stick to kind of get that out and in there and then f flatten it and push it up in there. Um, either way, you just want to get some of that along that tip. So I like how this is looking here and I'm just going to add a little bit more just by sort of letting it drip off of this and I'm gonna make sure that it's wet even a good portion, maybe the, the next inch or so of this is wet, just to really make sure that we're really filling up this whole area. All right, so you can see we have that nice thick kind of rope of, uh, of glass and epoxy going along our whole trailing edge here. And if it was with the thickened, the thickened epoxy, it would pretty much be the same, probably a little harder to see because it gets a little um, opaque once you fill it up. but. All we're looking to do is just fill in that area with something solid that we can sand and shape later on.
and I'll probably come back and check on this in a little bit. I still have that cup uh, with enough epoxy left in it. If I just need to add just a bit more to these wingtips, I can do that in maybe 10, 15 minutes. All right, so out onto the work table here and we're taking a look at our wing. And so we have our, our edge poured nicely on the trailing edge here. And so everything is now fully cured, obviously, and it's going to be time to just clean up this back edge a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a utility knife. So this is a nice sharp blade and I'm just going to be, again, always be careful using sharp blades. I'm just going to trim this down the best we can. It's going to be a bit difficult. You're not going to get a really clean, precise trim simply because some of this is built in so thick that you're not going to be able to cut through it nicely. But a lot of these dry areas and really fringe parts, we'll be able to trim a good portion of those away with this. And we just want to get it down to nice hard glass so that we can come in with sandpaper and then we'll really start to trim down that trailing edge and start to clean it up. All right, so we trimmed up this edge a bit. You can see it's, it's a little bit cleaner, but it's definitely still needs some work. So now this really depends on what tools you have on hand. Again, if you have sandpaper, um, putting the sandpaper on some sort of board like this definitely makes it go a little bit easier and you can get a very straight edge if, you're, if your block is very straight. So I'm definitely going to start working it down with this. If you have an orbital sander, that will work as well. I know this is a pretty common tool for a lot of people to have. If you have a belt sander, that, that's even better. Um, when I do large groups, you know, a, a batch of maybe 10 or so wings, I obviously have some uh, stronger and faster power tools to make that process go a lot quicker. But uh, really just make do with whatever you have. Again, all you really need is sandpaper and putting it on just a, a block of wood is a huge advantage. So we're just going to start sanding this down. And so you can see really where it goes from gross kind of prickly glass to where that edge is actually nice and poured in there. So I'm probably going to leave Again, maybe a little bit more than a quarter of an inch or five or so millimeters. I'm just going to start working my way up to that foam. And once I am happy with that edge, I'm going to stop and leave it there. And I'm gonna be careful with the tips as well. Just work my way around these tips and leave that nice solid edge to it. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Oftentimes you might have some areas that are a little bit low and they're gonna require some filling in later. And normally that gets taken care of when we gloss coat both sides of the wings. That'll really fill in any of those defects and you'll be able to sand those out later. And even if that doesn't take care of them, if you have a really big imperfection, you can always just add in some more epoxy with filler or extra glass to fix out those areas. So it's just gonna take a little bit more time. You're gonna to have to make that little patch repair and wait for it to cure, but you can always pretty much fix it and get things looking great again. So I'm gonna start sanding this down. So I'm just gonna show you a brief little bit. This is, um, this sandpaper is pretty dull. I should really change it out, but you can just get an idea of how quick and easy sandpaper mounted on a board like this will work. So just working along that edge there, you can see we're already knocking off a good bit of material. So I'm just gonna go like that along the whole edge. All right, so a few minutes later and we're down and trimmed up very nice. You can see I left a nice solid portion of that trailing edge. And again, this will be further refined as we continue working on the wing. And the tips are relatively cleaned up. You can see they're not perfect yet. And once again, these will be all further refined. So the next thing we're going to want to do is trim up the fuselage pocket here. If you remember, we cut this with the knife when it was still somewhat curing. And I didn't do an exact perfect job. And now is the time I'm going to want to get in here with a sharp blade and make sure that this glass is trimmed nice and flush with the foam going all the way around. 
All right, with, with that inside now cleaned up, I have right here a whole bunch of strips that are cut up. Again, this is detailed in the uh, sheet that outlines all the layers and how big and how many to put where. But what I'm going to do is just lay these strips into the fuselage pocket here. And I just like to use a little bit of, uh, use a little brush. And just like with the stabilizer, I like to really soak this area out. Um, you almost can't use enough epoxy on this step. So feel free to really get it in there, coat the bottom, the sides, pretty much everything. And with these little strips, you can lay them out. They're pretty forgiving because they're of how small they are. Like you can easily get it to hug some of these corners. And so I'm just laying down those strips that are, are required along the bottom. And then I'm going to do some that go along the sides here and just have some small overlaps in all these areas just to make sure that everything is covered. This is relatively imprecise in terms of, you know, if you miss a layer here or there or you don't have the correct, there's really no exact way to lay it up there. You, you pretty much just want to make sure that you have all the foam bottom, sides, front is nice and covered with the appropriate amount of layers. And again, refer to that sheet just to get your ballpark around what you want in each area. And so you can see, since we already have a lot of resin in there already, you can add quite a good amount of strips and they just start to absorb all that extra resin. And then I'll come in here and make sure that there's no air bubbles, that everything is nicely soaked out. Really, really the only thing to keep an eye on is just to make sure that these corners are nice and sharp and that they're not getting rounded by the glass. And again, that's something at the end before you leave this to cure up that you can um, neaten up and make sure that it's exactly how it should be. So that's going to be it for the layers. And I'm just making sure that everything is nice and soaked. So before I leave this to cure, what I'm going to do is I'm using the, um, the nail of my finger and just pressing it along the corners, up in the front, and then down along the other side. And so I can really feel and see the difference and see how that is really nice and tight in that corner. And so that's what we want. We just want to avoid having a really rounded uh, inside corner there. So that is looking perfect right there. And so I'm just going to let this cure and then we can come in with that knife later on once it's fully cured or when it's at that point where it's easy to cut with the knife and I'm going to come in and trim that up. Just a quick zoom in here one last time. So you can see real nice tight corners. Everything's relatively flat. Coming off the back here, there's a little bit of an overhang. So that's, that's something you wanna look for, a half inch to a centimeter past the slot out onto the glass of the wing. So that's what we're looking for in this stage of the build. So with the wing here, you can tell that I obviously went in and trimmed up all that glass that was overhanging our fuselage spot. Again, just with sandpaper, you can get in there. Also, a sharp blade can trim away most of it and then really get down there and try to get this as flush as you can with that sandpaper. So if we've glassed up the wing already, getting started on the stabilizer is going to be very easy. Uh, again, this is a swoosh style. That's a, an option that if you want that, you can have that. Normally, um, the standard is just a flat stabilizer. So again, following the recommendations, it's really just two layers of glass on, this, on the stabilizer. Um, so I'm gonna get started working on that. So it does not really matter which side you start with on this, but 
I generally like to just take a disposable brush and first pretty much just paint it with epoxy and that's just going to make it much easier to get that first layer down. It's pretty quick just like that. And especially on the mounting side we just want to make sure that the glass stays relatively flat and doesn't bridge that flat area in there. So that's just something just to pay a little extra attention to. So you can see this glass really just starts to soak out very quickly. Nice and easy. And so if you can see there's just a little bit of bridging right here and really the best way I've found to, to get rid of that is just to make sure first off you have a good amount of epoxy in there and then after you get and then after you get all your glass laid down so we're coming in with the second layer I'm just gonna go in there and just kind of smooth it out and make sure that that glass because as I'm going with this motion right it's totally bridging that whole area because I'm pulling the glass apart and so the last thing I'm going to do is to come in and make sure that that's laying down flat. Again, making sure that we're getting all the way out to the edges and making sure that there's no dry spots. And there's no real, so I didn't tape underneath this. I'm not going to worry about the timing as we did on the other wing. I'm pretty much just going to let it cure and then come in with a blade and just zip around the whole edge here. So everything is nice and saturated. And now I'm just going to pay a little bit of attention and just make sure that this glass is worked down and in on each side just like that so everything's laying flat there's no bridging there's no bubbles it looks great and again I'll, I'll come in and check on this in 10 or so minutes just to make sure that nothing popped up and I didn't didn't miss anything just a couple little air bubbles I'm working out right now so that's it for doing the stabilizer that's the top side I'm gonna let this cure trim it and then I'm gonna do the other side and then I'm going to come in and do something similar to how we got the, um, the edge on this wing. I'm going to do something similar for this as well. All right, so that first side of our stabilizer has now cured up. And I'm go just going to trim up the edges with a sharp blade. Make sure it's nice and flush with the wooden fin. And then I'm going to glass the other side. All right, so... I have these edges trimmed up nice and flush with the wood and I just have something to elevate uh, this stabilizer because it is a swoosh. So if we get it up off the ground and I have my pieces already pre-cut out and I'm just making sure that this epoxy is nice and mixed and I'm just going to coat it just like we did the first time. Uh, so there is this, this hole is what holds it in place while it's being milled out on the machine. So we just want a little bit of extra attention and just fill that in before we start. And just as before, I'm using a brush and I'm just going to brush out and really soak epoxy into this wood. And it just helps out when we get that first layer of glass down. And so we're just going to wet it out just like we did before and also like how we did with the foam core wing, I'm going to want to flip this over and pour an edge all around the wing. And so that's going to be the next step in this process. Again, much, very easy. Just simply because it's small, 
and we're not doing nearly as many layers. So in comparison to any of the large foam wings, any sort of stabilizer is going to be pretty easy. And we just want to make sure once again that we are soaking out all the glass and getting, making sure that the glass is soaked maybe at least a quarter of an inch or five millimeters out from the wood. Uh, you just want to make sure you give yourself just a little bit of extra room so you have something to pour that epoxy rail onto. Because if it's complete bone dry, or if the fiberglass is completely dry when you go to pour that rail, that's definitely not the ideal situation. So there we go, nice and wet it out. I'm just going to leave it here and let this get pretty much almost fully cured. And then I'm gonna come in and pour that rail. So with the stabilizer here, uh, obviously it's cured and I just went and trimmed a good portion of that glass away. I did leave about a half inch or a centimeter of glass along the whole sides because we gotta pour those rails. And of course you need that to kind of hold it in there. Um, so what I'm going to do with this one is show the other way of using thickened epoxy instead of those fiberglass strands on the curved side of the tips. So we'll do that on the tips and then down on the flat areas, I'll just pour just normal epoxy just to show you that side of things. So really giving you an idea of every technique that you can use. Okay, so I've mixed up some epoxy and mixed in those microfibers. So you can see that it's thick enough that it's not going to run. It's just gonna hang onto the stick here. And I have a baggie, which I've cut a, cut the corner off of. So kind of like icing a cake. And again, you don't really need to do this, but I just find it makes it a little easier and neater to do it this way. So I'm just going to get it all down into that corner. And then I'm going to pretty much just lay it in along these curved surfaces here, right down into that joint. And better to have too much than too little because we're definitely going to be sanding away any of the excess once it, once it cures up. So if you go like this, you can get that nice epoxy edge and it's not going to run off of the curve on you. And I'm going to do that again with the other side. So now that our wingtips are taken care of, I'm just going to take normal epoxy that's not thickened. I guess theoretically you could use thickened epoxy here too. And I'm just going to lay a nice line of epoxy down into what's left and let this set up. And then once it's all cured, I'm gonna come back give it its final trim and sand this down and get those edges looking great. So don't be afraid to use a little bit extra. So just zooming in here on one of the curved tips. And again, I'm using the swish stabilizer here. And if this was just your normal wing, uh, if you're using doing the tips this way, uh, same thing applies. So you, you can see we have our thickened epoxy up in here and that's not flowing down off the tip. And then right up, where the curve starts, we have my, our normal epoxy that's just sitting right there. And that's not gonna go anywhere because we're on a flat level surface. Okay, so back to our stabilizer. We have our edges poured, everything's looking great. Just need to trim up the edges, clean them up. And so I'm going to use sandpaper again to get this job done. And so that's just like we did with the trailing edge of the main wing. We just want to get in there and sand it down and leave a nice epoxy edge going around the whole stabilizer. All right, so now the stabilizer is nice and sanded. You can see the edges obviously got trimmed down really nice, went around the uh, stabilizer tips. Those look great. So everything's smooth and we have our nice edge set, set all the way around the part. So now I'm just going to gloss this. Again, gloss the top, gloss the bottom, just as we're doing with the main wing.